exactly a week ago, almost like to the minute. Um, I'd re just returned from doing yoga. I was relaxed. I was sitting down at my computer to start getting working, um, had lots to do, probably a few stressors on my plate. And I got a phone call and um, picked it up. I, I get calls from random people all the time because I have businesses and picked it up. And, and I was immediately informed in a very stern voice that um, immediately making me nervous and scared that I had I, my identity had been hacked. So I'd basically been told your identity isn't hacked and um, and you need to protect yourself right now. And um, we're from the U.S. Customs and Border Control. And this is um, we need it like and it was um, so. The beginning of this this thing starts out where I would normally think, ah, and I was dubious and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Why would they call me? Um, and they were very forthcoming and, oh, please go to the website, Google, you know, look on your own, look up US Borders and Control, uh, .gov, you know, go here, look up the information. You can verify the number. So I go on where I'm, you know, it's not, I'm not following a link. I'm I'm going actually to the government website. I, I see that there's this number and I look at my phone, it's verified, it's the same number. I'm like, okay, mm, doesn't seem real, doesn't feel right, but I'll listen. I'm gonna listen a little longer and see what you have to say because it seems like I could be in jeopardy, my identity, my my assets, my family could be in jeopardy. So I better, I better listen. And at some point in this, probably an hour and a half of prep work that she did with me, um, I, my brain was activated um, there's actually a part of the brain um, called the amygdala um, that got activated that puts me into fight or flight. So it's basically my brain went into fight or flight. Um, and I'm looking at this now from an outside perspective at the moment. I was just thinking, I wasn't thinking, I was just like, oh, I have to do what they say because this is really scary. Um, and from that initial call, I was transferred to another call. And all these things are like, if I were sitting across a room watching me, I would say, there's no way you would ever fall for that. There's like, there's no possibility in any of your realms of how your brain works that you would ever like follow this and, and think, oh, I should be, I should be listening to her and, and talk to this other person for another three hours. There's no way that anything that followed after that is logical in my brain. And there's nothing that, um, that makes it plausible in any way. And if I were to just tell a stranger and I, I have, and they're like, well, like, right, that's what they're going to tell you to do. And I'm like, no, I would never believe that. Um, and so the the rest of the story follows in this almost like a trance um, where my fight or flight mechanism has gone into overdrive. And even though I'm the front, my frontal brain is going, hey, you know, this doesn't seem right. I I don't think the FBI would do, you know, send off to the FBI. I've got another number. I verified it. I've asked about like what towns are nearby. Now, thinking back at it, I know that probably somebody was saying, you know, Googling really quick what towns are near Buffalo um, so that he could have the right answers. Um, so my part of my brain was was functioning, going, doesn't seem right. They would never ask me to do this. This, this is not plausible. Um, and then I was told, get in your car. And I'm like, yeah, no, I really don't want to do this. And I get in my car and I, I and he's like, turn on that, turn on your speaker, put me on, put me on speaker. And I'm like, yeah, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel good. Um, you need to do this. This is really important. They know where you live. They know what's going on. You need to do this. This is how you're going to save your assets and, and you're going you're to be safe. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm driving. And he's like, you need to go to your bank. And I'm like, there's no way any, there's no way in any realm that that's plausible. Right. But I get in my car and I drive to my bank the whole time saying, protesting, saying, yeah, mm, this feels really bad. Don't want to do this. I go, my friends, the bank are there. I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to like, I, no, this. And he's like, don't look at your friend. You need to focus. You need to do what you have to do. And I went to the bank. I just recently received this amazing grant. I'm so excited. Random Acts of Reading is going to be able to now like do all these fabulous things. And I had I had announced it to the world. We got this grant. We can now do all this great work. So looking back now, I'm thinking, well, they may have been like, well, this person just has money. You know, she has money in her account. We should attack her. And um, and then this implausible, absolutely implausible, like where you if you if I ever looked at anybody doing this thing, I would I would be screaming at them saying, no, what are you thinking? What are you doing? But the, the thing is, and this is well, it, it is implausible. 
It is implausible. And yet I went up to the teller and cleared out those accounts. So like this implausible situation arises where he tells me, okay, take the, take the cash. And I need you to follow this very closely. And he gave me like step-by-step instructions. Um, and I'm, I'm like, you know, there's, it is, there's no way the FBI is telling me to go to the, to the smoke shop and shove money in a crypto machine. That's not, that's not something we do. You need to go, this is a safe place. This is a public space. This is how we secure your funds so that they aren't stolen by the, by the um, impersonators. This is, this is what you have to do. Your identity isn't stolen. You need to do this in order to nothing plausible, nothing that my thinking brain would ever go like, yeah, okay, I'll go do that. Um, But I got in the car, I drove and I started shoving bills into this machine. And when I got to a point um, where I, I, I was like, this, this is so wrong. I'm not doing it. I'm not pushing the button. And this guy is going, you need to push the button. You need to push the button. And I'm like, I'm not going to push the, oh my God, I pushed the button. And I think the final, the final straw was when I realized I'm shoving my daughter's money in there. And I think my mama brain, my mama bear brain like kicked in and was like, no, you can't do this. I mean, I, the whole time I protested, but I couldn't stop. I couldn't. Um, and so for me, the, the, so as soon as that happened, I was able to hang up the phone, call 911. The cops came, um, we reported the FBI. There's a, there's, it's going to be followed up, but there's really nothing you can do about crypto um, theft because it's just gone. Um, but, and I lost, so I lost the money that wasn't mine, which is horrifying and it's a terrible feeling and you feel guilt and you feel stupidity. Um, and as the evening progressed, I just went into this point of despair almost where I was like, this person violated my soul. Like he got into my brain. He, he, he was in there controlling what I was doing. And either, either that didn't happen because there's no way in my realm of possibilities that it could happen. And if it didn't happen, then, and I'm here, then this can't be real or it happened. And I got so violated and so attacked. This is, it was like the deepest trauma. And I basically for, well, the first thing I did is I, I didn't sleep. And so when I I woke up um, in the middle of the night, I started writing because I know if I were to turn this inward, I would go into AFib, I would probably die and it would be terrible. And so I started writing and I decided I'm also going to write and I'm going to share it because if I don't share it, I will be so mortified when I wake up in the morning, if I get out of bed, that I won't tell anybody because it's so horrible and it, it's just so embarrassing. It's mortifying. Like, how could you do that? And so for five days, five days, I felt just this overwhelm of all the bad emotions you could possibly think. I was... I just sobbed and then I would write and then I would sob and I would talk to a friend who was reached out and I was talking to strangers who were reaching out. And on Saturday night, I started doing a a technique that's it's like a meditation technique called EFT where you kind of like, it it calms your amygdala, it calms your brain and gets you to to settle down. And um, so I, I woke up early, I was finally getting like four or five hours of sleep. And I woke up on Sunday morning and I realized that I'm not stupid. Falling for one of these tricks is not stupid. It's not like I was gullible. It's not like I fell for it. It was that my, my, my brain was activated in a way that put me in fight or flight. And from that point of fight or flight, he wasn't in my brain, but my brain was saying, Hey, Back in the really old days when there were tigers chasing us, you know, you have to run. So your brain kicks into the fight or flight. That's what this response is. And my brain was saying, you have to do this because this is the only way you're going to stay safe, stay safe, stay safe. Um, and because it's the only way I can stay, stay safe, I have to do this. And it wasn't my fault. I'm not stupid. I'm not gullible. My brain, part of my brain was trying to protect me from something bad happening to me. And it's really, really strong. This emotion is really strong. And not only that, this is, I think, the thing that made me finally, like, understand that I'm not crazy and that I don't need, I was ready to check myself in somewhere, um, that all day long, we have this happen. Someone calls you on the phone and tells you something sad and you start crying. It's not like you said, oh, I think I'll start crying now. It's like, oh, that really hurts me, I'm gonna cry. Or someone texts something, or you see something on a post on Facebook 
and you start going, oh my God, you idiot, I can't believe you're doing that. And you're like, did I wake up this morning deciding that instead of writing my report that I need to do for work, I'm going to go on Facebook and start responding to some random people who are, have, have ignited my brain to do the, to be like in this, this modus. It's like, you don't do, you do this all day long, all day long. We're doing these activities that are, are unwilling um, responses to things that are just our brains getting ignited saying, Hey, this seems dangerous. This is scary. This has activated your, 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 your body hormones change. You know, it's it, your, your brain is being activated and you don't have, it's not your fault. And if it happened to you or it happened to one of your friends, you're probably mortified and embarrassed. And it's, it's just, it's this terrible feeling, but so what I decided that I have to do here is I have to let people know that it, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. This happened to you. You were attacked and it was your brain trying to protect you. And all you need to do now is forgive yourself because there's nothing to be forgiven for, but find that compassion for yourself, not forgiveness. You need to find compassion for yourself that this happened to you and get yourself out of this amygdala hijack. It's, there's actually a, this is an important thing to, to look up. Um, there's a thing called amygdala hijack and it happens to people all the time. And there are, there are, I kept thinking about all the different ways that I see it in my world. People hear something that's scary. They're told something that's scary. And then they hear a response. This is what you have to do for this scary situation. And then they go into this mode where they're doing things they would never do. I mean, I see it everywhere. And, and once you get into that mode, you're like, well, either I'm crazy or it's true. And I don't want to be crazy. So I'm going to just keep believing it's true. And until you can get yourself out of that hijack mode, you're going to keep believing it's true. So my, my hope from all this is one, like the money is terrible. I will re-raise the, the funds. I will fill the coffers. Um, I'm going to make sure that none of that money is missing in the account by the end of next week. I'll find a way to put it in there. Um, but I want to share my story so that, um, I mean, I'm, I'm a savvy, smart person. I traveled the world. I have businesses. I'm, I, I'm, I've seen it happen to almost happen to people close to me. And I thought, why would you ever fall for that? It, 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 if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. And if you hold on to that by yourself and feel like, oh my God, I did this. I'm such a terrible person. I'm such a stupid person. It will consume you. It consumed me. And I'm, I knew I was, I was going to be very proactive very quickly to get through this. Um, but it is, it is all consuming. It is horrific. It is traumatizing. And if it happened to you, get help. And if you are ever on the phone or have some situation, an email where you're not sure, find somebody and you're near, it's like, say, Hey, come over here and look at this. Does this look real? Hey, listen to this or just hang up the phone immediately. Like, so maybe you insult the customs and border control. They'll, they'll probably come with somebody to your, they will never call you. First of all, these organizations will never call you. They will never ask you for money. This is, you can, I mean, afterwards, of course, I Googled immediately, um, you know, fraud with the U.S. Border Control and and it comes up like a whole page um, about, we will never ask you for money. We will never ask you to do use crypto. Um, I'm not the first one who got pulled into this thing. Um, it's a billion dollar industry, actually. I've been doing some research and it's, um, and I think probably everybody knows somebody that had it happen to if it didn't happen to them themselves in some time. And it's something that I don't think we talk about the fact that it's not being gullible. It's, we've been hacked. Like our brains have been hacked um, and it's not our fault and you need to get help and find ways to get out of it. So I'm sharing my story. I'm, um, I've am i been sharing it on social media, which is very vulnerable and um, scary because there are people I don't know who don't know my integrity. Um, so I'm, I'm moving it to this other platform so that I feel safer, but I, and I'm going to, I, I shared the first three stories that I wrote um, to help me, you know, make myself put it out there. Um, and then going through the different phases of this trauma. Um, and I have a long journey ahead of me. I'm joining, oh, so th there are amazing resources out there. So I'm I'm joining a, um, a group therapy session today at three with the AARP um, for people who've been, at, it's a 
for people who've been scammed, um, who've been traumatized like this. And so the ARP offers um, programs. Um, don't just Google anything and say, hey, I've been scammed because then there's going to be a scammer out there scamming you off the scam. Make sure you're going through, like, do your due diligence. Um, but know that even if you did your due diligence, I mean, I verified all the numbers. I called the local police station when they told me that the cop was going to come. And I said, to help to help me out. He's like, he's coming, you know, he's coming tomorrow to help you out. And I said, well, I'm going to call the local cops. So I make that phone call. And as I'm calling it out, I get a number, I get a call from that number, supposedly they've hacked into the numbers and I get that call back thinking, oh, well, they've, they've like, they've got a callback service. So I think I'm talking to them and that's the whole time, everything I very, so don't even trust what you, what you think's going on. If it seems dubious, get somebody from the outside who's not been hijacked and hang up the phone, you know, come back to it or get somebody to come back to it with you so that it doesn't, it doesn't happen again. Um, yeah, it is, it is one of the most traumatizing things that's ever happened to me. Um, I feel incredibly vulnerable and, um, but I also feel like this is going to be something that I can, I can make a difference. It happened to me and I have words and I can share them. And um, I really hope that as this season goes on where people are feeling happy and joyful and um, their guards are down that um, it doesn't happen to more people. I've heard horrific stories of people losing everything. Um, and I'm grateful that it was just money and that I'm safe and that I'm on a path to recovery.